It's week three, and I'm bringing you injury updates, news and notes, and we're coming at you with the starts and sits for this week's matchups. Let's jump into it. And welcome back to the Standard Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jono, and again, I'm riding solo without Chris here, my co-host, Uh, I will be bringing you the news and notes, any updates, and then I'm going to go right into a start and sit compilation of the games coming up with a special guest that I will introduce once we move over there. I got a few quick news and notes before I jump into them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you get all the updates and all the drops that we send your way and all the advice that you need to get to your fantasy championship. First up here, Jordan Love, if you guys have not seen already, has participated in practice as of Wednesday, September 18th. That's a good sign. Now, what level of participation, not sure about quite yet, but that uh, sign of participation means he should be back sooner than later. We knew that because he wasn't put on IR, but this is a brighter sign that it's actually kind of a possibility he could even play this weekend. Uh, I doubt it, but I like it if you're Jordan Love owners. Moving on, Rush, uh, Isaiah Pacheco had surgery. It was successful. Six to eight weeks is the lead time for him to get back on the field. I expect it on more towards the latter end of it all because it, it is a break. He has got to come back, and we'll see. If this team struggles with the running game and struggles offensively, maybe they try and get him back a little bit sooner. Kareem Hunt, on the other hand, has signed with the Chiefs. Uh, the former draft pick for the Kansas City Chiefs is back with Andy Reid. This comes on the heels of the Pacheco injury. I like this for the Chiefs. We know what uh, we know what Kareem Hunt can do. We know he's not going to be lightning in a bottle, uh, but what he is going to be able to do is he's going to be able to do some short yardage work. He's going to be able to pound the rock in between the tackles, and he's a versatile back. He is on the slower end from earlier in his career, but he's versatile enough and good for pass protection. So if the rookie can't cut it with Carson Steele, they at least can lean heavily on the veteran who has shown up for Cleveland the past two seasons. He did it last year, waited for an injury. They signed him in Cleveland after the Nick Chubb injury, and he was able to find the end zone a couple times, spell some carries from Jerome Ford. You hate to see it when you're the owners of Carson Steele and everybody went out there, but something to keep an eye on. Uh, Justin Herbert injury. I have not heard any other updates besides that he wasn't at the morning media portion of practice today, but he is dealing with what they're calling an ankle. He did get x-rays on his foot and ankle area. They were negative, but what does that mean for him for this weekend? That has huge implications, especially if you're Quentin Johnson uh, owners, but this Steelers defense can absolutely steamroll the Chargers if they can't have uh, their big quarterback at the helm. Two other pieces. Speaking of the Steelers, Justin Fields is getting the start again. I actually like that against the Chargers here. The Chargers defense is fast and gets the quarterback a lot. This may help out better not it not being um, Russell Wilson and being better that it is Justin Fields for the Steelers because he is going to be able to extend plays, get out of the pocket, make a few plays. And we'll see. I think they should be able to run on this team. Um, the Chargers haven't really had a strong opponent yet that they faced that can do anything. And Really, the Steelers have been facing tough opponents. So I'd like to see what what happens here in this game. This is one to watch for the offenses. You'll see in our start and sits what we're actually suggesting here. It's not anything pretty, but like I said, there's talent in Justin Fields enough that he can be startable in a fantasy format. And lastly, uh, this one came up as a surprise here was CeeDee Lamb was a a non-participant in practice today. Uh, It is Wednesday. So sometimes you see these guys take a rest day, but it did put him down as the injury designation. Uh, So I believe it was ankle, something to keep an eye on for that. And then upcoming days leading to the weekend, it should be nothing crazy because there was no big news coming out of the weekend there. But the fact that he's not at practice was a little bit alarming. So that's the uh, news and updates for today, September 18th, as of 5 p.m. So why don't we roll into what you guys are here to listen to? And I'm going to introduce my buddy, our league mate, the one you've seen on here in the podcast before, who's done mock drafts with us, and that's the one and only Nick Lambros. Welcome in, Nick. What's going on, Jono? Um, so let's jump into this first matchup that we got here. We got <clears throat> Patriots at Jets tomorrow night, Thursday night matchup, or it, for the fact you guys are watching now, it's t- tonight, Thursday. Um 
I have here, and I, I've conversed obviously with Chris on a lot of these starts and sits because he'd be upset if I didn't. Um, but Brees Hall is going to be a start here. I find it hard to ever sit this this running back. We're going to start Garrett Wilson. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson looks like he is the bulldozer that you want him to be. Hunter Henry is the relief valve and the uh, target for Joe, Kobe Brissett right now. So you're going to start him. And then Braylon Allen finds his way onto our start list here after a phenomenal week two performance. He's going to get opportunities. He's going to get carries. Um, on, on our sit side, we got Alan Lazard, Mike Williams, and the Pats receivers, uh, just because these are two stingy defenses. Who's somebody that you do like in this game that you're excited to watch this weekend? I mean, obviously the big guys, Brees, um, I have Braylon Allen, so I'm, I'm interested to see what he could do in, in repeating some of what he did last week, but a guy that I don't see on, I think either you or Jono's that I heard you talk about is maybe Gibson. Antonio Gibson, um, depending on the, I think either way, whatever way the game script goes there, he he's shown that he's involved. Um, I think it was a near split on the snap shares. I'm not exactly sure how, how it panned out there, but they, they want to run the ball there. Um, and he's been very effective doing that. So I would say maybe a sleeper. If you need a flex, Antonio Gibson might be a guy to look to. I know he's available on a lot of waivers, and I think, Jono, you might have just picked him up in our league. I just snagged him. Let's just be, you know, when Marshawn Lloyd goes on the IR and I already have Hawkinson taking up my one spot available, I want to yeah. get somebody who's going to get an opportunity. And I agree with you that he is going to get some opportunity. I know that Ramondre, he's dealt with injury in the past. I think he got a little banged up in the game last week. Gibson did end up coming in for some uh, plays, and I think they're going to start doing that a little bit more to keep Ramondre healthy. Um, but the one surprising stat that I've noticed was you thought that coming from the commanders uh, that Gibson would be a big time passing down back, a guy out the backfield, a dump down player, something this Patriots need, to be honest with you. But he hasn't been. And Ramondre really hasn't been catching a ton of passes. That's what surprised me a lot about this offense. And I'm wondering if they're going to start leaning that way a little bit more and attacking these linebackers for the Jets, which are banged up right now. So that's something to watch tomorrow night's games. Let's move on to the matchup that I'm going to want to watch the most. And that's Giants at Browns. If you look at our list here, it's very short. You've got Malik Neighbors and Deontay Foreman as major starters here. I got Singletary as a sit, even though he found the end zone last week. There's a lot of names that aren't on here. Most of them are going to be sits, but this game can go either way. The Browns haven't looked that great offensively. The Giants, surprisingly, actually are better defensively than everybody uh, is taking them out to be. And then on the other end of the ball, the Giants' offense, they were able to move the ball last week against the Commanders, no surprise, uh, but both on the ground and through the air. And Cleveland, if their offense can't stay on the field, their defense is good, but you get tired quick. We know how that works. So I don't suspect this being a game where the Giants are going to win it, uh, and I don't know how much they're going to actually be in it. But what do you, what are you looking for out of this game here? What do you, what do you expect? I mean, there's not a lot to, yeah. to talk about, really. It's really not a game to be interested in too much um, other than the top guys there that you mentioned with neighbors. You have Cooper. I guess you're starting him. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd probably start Lean Cooper as a start. Is is Watson healthy? He's definitely playing. He's healthy, but I just don't yeah. trust him. And and he's struggled against defensive fronts that have been able to get to the quarterback. And we know these Giants defensive front, if it is what it is, I mean, you have Burns and Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence. It could be messy again. Yeah, and then, I mean, I think you might want to – Maybe some sleepers are the Giants running backs. You don't have um, Singletary listed here. I have him as a sit. I only have him as a sit because that's the one thing that the Browns have been doing pretty well, and that's the rush defense. Okay, They've been beaten through the air more times than they'd be beaten on the ground. And Singletary hasn't been this electric chunk play type of running back that the Giants have been used to with Saquon. He's going to be used in short yardage times. He's going to, you're going to have to try and establish the run, but I just don't see him being electric enough and mm-hmm. being a play ma- a playmaker or somebody that's going to really change the the game at all. I, d- I just think I think I agree. And I, if you're going to go for anything, you're going to look for volume. Foreman is interesting because he kind of showed that he can take on that role for them um, if they need him if they get ups on the Giants, which is pretty likely. So. Uh, yeah, not a lot to be excited about starting right right in that spot. Yeah, no, I agree. I think Foreman is a is a good start because he did out um, outpace 
Jerome Ford last week, and on top of that, the Giants are that's where they are most susceptible. I mean, they've been pretty stingy against the wide receivers. Yeah, they let up two touchdowns week one to Jefferson, which should have been a deflection, bad defensive play there, and the missed coverage to Naylor. But at the end of the day, they held Jefferson to 59 yards, you know, open weekend. He held everybody else to short yardage too. So they've been pretty good on that front. The hard part is can they let up the runs? And we know Deontay Foreman's got a little bit um, – a little bit of burst of speed. He's broken out some big, big games in the previous couple seasons. So that's the the nervous Giants fan in me is thinking Deontay Foreman may take this game over against the Giants. But we'll see. I mean, again, Giants have surprised me more. So moving on, Eagles Saints. I think this is the one I really want to see. Can Derek Carr can Derek Carr continue the uh, the two touchdown a game over two hundred fifty yards passing? I mean. He's doing it on the shoulders of dumping to Alvin Kamara and deep bombs to Rashid Shahid, who are both starts as well, along with uh, Carr. And on the Eagles side of the ball, you are you can't ever sit Saquon Barkley. You can't sit Jalen Hurts because um, just that rushing upside that you saw on uh, Mon- was it Sunday night, Monday night, Monday night will give you enough of an advantage, even if he does throw interceptions. And then Devonta Smith, because A.J. Uh, Brown is out. He's the only one getting it. I'm going to stick with the sit of Olave and Taysom Hill. What do you think of that? I think that's very interesting. I think you want a lot of pieces of this game. I think outside of that Detroit-Arizona game, this is the game that's going to have points in it. You got the Correct. Eagles coming off of a loss. They, they play a little bit better on the road, I almost I almost feel like, in these spots, even though they're, they're favored here, but not by much. Um, and what that Saints team has been doing, it's kind of hard to sit down the bigger pieces. You said you want to sit Olave and who? And Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill's coming off that chest injury, which he did have to go to the hospital for last week. He, he was cleared and seems yeah. to be all right. But I, he just hasn't I been used in this offense that much because he hasn't had yeah. to. I'd be all right sitting down Taysom. The um, only reason, here, let me just bring up a point here to everybody why I, I, I'm not big on Olave. I'm not out on Olave for the season. The biggest change that Kubiak has brought to this offense is the amount of pre-snap motion that this team – they're the, the number one team for the most pre-snap motion out there. And that helps give a read on the defense. It creates mismatches. And Shahid is the one that's doing the motion. Now, if you go over and look at what's happening at the other game you just uh, for, aforementioned being the Bucks game, there's one player on that team that is benefiting from pre-snap motion this season again, and that's Chris Godwin. Now, these guys are – mostly in the slot, but they can go out wide too as well. But this pre-snap motion that they're moving around shows the defenses, creates these mismatches, and they end up being these target hogs on the on both teams right now, and they're both having fantastic starts to their season. That's The Olave side of it is kind of like your Drake London, what you saw on Monday night. Who was the best receiver for the Falcons and kept getting open? It was Darnell Mooney on some big chunk plays, and... Um, Besides that, you, Drake London wasn't the benefactor there, and Olave's kind of in this position where he's getting the top coverage, he's getting the one-on-ones, or he's getting bracketed, and they're taking advantage of it too as well. And it's no slight to the talent of Chris Olave because I think he's very good. But they're just showing what they can do. They're going to get it to their playmakers. The other thing too I, is the Eagles can't stop the run. We saw that with Bijan. Alvin's going to be furious this week. On the field. Well, I, f- I feel like if you beat the Eagles, the, the what the secondary is what's susceptible there. So that's kind of more the downfield targets for correct. Uh, well, I mean, for, the one thing I will say eat. is a hundred and some, hundred and thirty yards or hundred twenty yards for Bijan this past weekend. I think it was on the ground. Yeah, I mean, he ran really well. Um, and Elgier. when when I will say when it came down to the red zone opportunities and and push comes to shove, that that uh, Georgia. Uh, Philadelphia Bulldogs front is actually pretty stingy. Um, yeah. So I think that helped them out there. So the air is where you're going to see it. But we're talking about an air raid here from Rashid Shahid, K- Kamara out the backfield. This could be an interesting game. And I actually, you know, the Saints D is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but this may be one of their their biggest opponents so far that we may see a, a higher scoring affair coming out. How do you one. how do you feel like uh, how do you feel about a Barkley fade this week? You can't do that. I don't know. I, I'm you're not fading Saquon. You gotta right. ride the hot hand. And if anything showed it to you on Monday night, this team, when they don't give him the ball in critical situations and they don't give him the ball in, in, in situations where they should, this team isn't built 
that well outside of that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Like they tried to do it last year with just um, with DeAndre Swift, and it worked for a couple games where he was great, and then DeAndre faded off because they changed the game plan. I was I'm a Saquon owner, but not even being a Saquon owner, watching that football game, the Eagles lost that game because they abandoned the run on on multiple times during drives when they should have been running it, and they were there were times where they should have been passing it. Um, and really exploiting the defense, and they weren't passing it. And their RPO, I'm sorry, is one of the slowest RPOs I've ever watched. So I, I think we should expect something a little bit different, and I wouldn't be surprised like if Saquon gets a uh, head of steam going in this game, they may hand it off to him 30 times. Yeah. Especially in the red zone. Manage some clock, too. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the Texans and Vikings. Um, I know you got a little bit of stake in it, with your, um, but I mean – Really, when it comes down to it here, you're starting Nico Collins. The guy's the number one wide receiver, uh, yardage-wise, in fantasy football. Um, mm -hmm. You're starting C.J. Stroud because he's throwing in Nico Collins. Um, you're starting Justin Jefferson. And if Joe Mixon does go, I like him as a start here as well. I think Joe Mixon's fantastic. But that's something to keep an eye on if he is in the mix. I'm not high on the other secondary receivers for the Vikings in here, but I'm not quite ready to sit them like if you have to stream them because of all these injuries I understand it but to me I think this is going to be the biggest test for Sam Darnold this is going to be Vikings getting a taste of their medicine with the amount uh, that the Houston Texans pressure the quarterback what are your thoughts on that hmm um I think for me that the Texans side of it is is how are you feeling about those receivers so far I think we've kind of seen how how Dell is shaping up in the pecking order there. Um, actually just saw Dell dropped in one of my leagues, uh, which is kind yeah. of insane. But then I went to Twitter and saw that other leagues, people are dropping Dell too, um, which I don't get because he could have had, I think, one or two 30, 40 yard touchdowns in that game had he kept his hands on the ball. Um, this is actually another game that I think Vegas thinks so. It's 46 and a half total. This is a, this is a fireworks game potentially. I don't know if Addison's going to be playing. Um, is he healthy? He's, he's, he's progressing. They Limited like the way he's progressing. Right now. But, but if so not, sure I think Naylor is an interesting sleeper. Um, some Ty Chandler. He's getting a little bit more involved in that offense there, uh, trying to keep Aaron Jones healthy throughout the season. So I think that if you have pieces in this game, you're firing them up. Um, yeah, I, I'm he more hesitant on the running game. I didn't put anybody as quite a sit in here. Because I didn't feel confident enough to say, yes, yeah, sit Aaron Jones. But listen, we saw what the Texans did to Chicago last week on Sunday night. DeAndre Swift couldn't get anywhere at any point. Caleb Williams was pressured nonstop. The receivers had trouble getting open because of the pressure. They couldn't you know, get deep enough into their routes. I see like Justin Jefferson is somebody you're starting. I think he's going to get plenty targeted here. I just get concerned that this is going to be a lot for Sam Darnold to happen or to handle. Mm -hmm. And I also think like they're going to, Kevin O'Connell is going to make it so that they get the ball out of hands quickly. And it sucks that the Vikings don't have Hawkinson right now, because that would be the premier target in my opinion, in a game like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if this takes the, the under because both defenses are blitzing uh, are you, defenses that could, that you, could literally cause turnovers. I know you're starting Stroud, but are you starting Darnold? As a no, streamer? I'm sitting Darnold. Yeah. He's on my sit list. Okay. Um, really, the only ones that I feel confident starting are, are Stroud, Collins, Jefferson, and, and if Mixon is there, Mixon. Everybody else, like, if you got to plug him in, plug him in. I, mm -hmm. I don't feel as confident. I'm fading Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler here, but not quite cool. convinced to sit them because, again, running back injuries are – you, you got to start some of these guys – you know, and I'd rather still play the veteran Aaron Jones over some other people that you can replace him with, but I don't feel great about it. Mm. Let's talk about the Bears right now. They, they're they at Indianapolis. Um, who are you excited to see? Like, there's a chance that that uh, Josh Downs is back. Yeah, you I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. I think in the first game, first game back, I don't think we see a full allotment of snaps for him. So kind of a risky start for me. I think Alec Pierce is someone that you can feel good about flexing. I still like a Donnie Mitchell a lot, um, but I, I feel like uh, there could be some points in this one as well. There's a 45 and a half uh, total on this one. Two kind of teams 
with some sloppy play that they're coming from. Um, so maybe some points fly around here. Uh, although the Bears do really have a legit defense. So I know. Um, we'll see. I mean, here's, maybe here's the Taylor one thing. The, Col- the Colts have been a little more susceptible to the run. Um, and they also had injuries now to the D-line. I like this maybe as a DeAndre Swift game, getting this feet underneath him mm-hmm. and getting this game going. He's been the majority stakeholder in the running game. I think – after this week, if he doesn't produce anything for another week or two, I think we start to see a sh- more shuffling around that backfield. But I like DeAndre I Swift agree. here. I like Jonathan Taylor here. And I actually like Alec Pierce here as well. Um, he seems to be the guy that is the odd man out from the defenses getting the, the off coverage. So I'm we sitting have to pit- see. Go ahead. We have to see if Keenan Allen is playing this week. Yeah, that, that's, that's unsure quite yet. The rookie. Yeah, that's unsure quite yet. I mean, Roma Dunze is an interesting play this week too as Roma well. Roma Dunze also hurt though. So it depends on what pieces are healthy for you to feel confident kind of. Yeah, that's why that's Bears. why my start my start list is literally three deep in here. And my yeah. sit list is for I, I have Roma Dunze as a sit here. Uh the Colts have, have been pretty good against the pass. Yeah. Uh, I have Richardson as a sit here against this defense. I think he's gonna struggle. And if he, he just yeah, goes to show, that. if he doesn't get a rushing game going mm-hmm. in, in, in fantasy, it could be, it could be pretty much nothing could, for him. Could be a tough day, but he's getting, he's getting healthier too, a little bit. Yeah, with his I don't disagree. So. Um, Roma Dunze is going to be fine. He played 94% of the snaps against Houston. It's, it's a tough um, one to call. This is almost a pick This is a pick And yeah. that's why I don't, I don't like pick for fantasy. Um, that's yeah. why you start your studs. You start your Jonathan Taylor. DeAndre Swift is probably somebody's running back too. Or flex. You're and starting you start more the hot if you have hand them. Without, you got to start yeah. the hot hand with Alec Pierce, too. I think that's one thing. I mean, Pittman, I'm not starting until I start to see more target share and target volume going his way. In, in Pittman's this scary right now. It is. If you're a Pittman yeah. owner, I'd be a little bit nervous. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of owners that are nervous but shouldn't be, if you listen to the notes I gave you earlier – Jordan Love has been practicing. So you got Packers at Titans. There's an outside shot that he could play in this game. I doubt he will, um, but there is. You're starting Josh Jacobs. The guy is unleashed in this backfield. He's got the the biggest um, share of a backfield out there next to like, Saquon and some of these other guys. I actually like Tony Pollard in this game a lot too. The Packers have struggled against the run as well. And Calvin Ridley actually has just created himself to be the alpha in this uh, wide receiver core. It's kind of putting DeAndre Hopkins on the back burner. Um, I have D Hop honestly as a sit here. Oh, we lost Nick. That's all right. Uh, I have uh, D Hop as a sit. I have Will Levis as a sit, and I have Malik Willis. Christian Watson as sits as well. Again, these guys aren't doing enough for me to really show and really give me something, especially with Malik Willis being the quarterback. I don't want to trust Christian Watson. I don't want to uh, trust Malik Willis against an actually decent enough Titans defense. Is there anybody in here... You know, what are your thoughts on Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs in this wide receiver core? If you have Malik Willis go another week, are you are you trying to flex any of them? It looks like Dobbs had 60 yards last week and was a benefactor of Willis kind of dumping down like I like I said to everybody there. Still not a startable play, but I'm looking at uh closely at whether or not Love is going to practice. Uh, in what capacity, and if so, what capacity this week, because I think it changes who you want to be on in this game um, to some extent. I think regardless, Jacobs is a great play, but if 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 Love is out again, he's a smash. Um, and just looking at the total, actually, I, I'm kind of surprised that the Titans are favored here, favored by I'm, two. I'm not surprised because the Titans have been pretty good on D, and they put up some points against the Jets last week, which surprised me too. They got a little creative. It, they came out this week saying they want to get the ball in Hopkins' hands a little bit more. Um, I could see this game taking taking the over on this game. Um, but I, I agree. It's kind of a weird fantasy spot here. I think a sneaky sleeper, and I was telling Chris about this uh, yesterday, and it's Emmanuel Wilson. Marshawn Lloyd just went on to the IR, IR yesterday. Uh, so he's going to be out, and they have no depth really behind 
behind any proven depth behind that I know of behind um, Josh Jacobs, Josh Jacobs there. So if you're in a standard yeah. league, especially where he could get, you know, a couple series and, and who knows, maybe there there's a big run and they want to put Emmanuel Wilson there in there for the goal line uh, carry at the, at the end of it uh, to hammer it in. Not, not a terrible um, one to try out there. He's most likely going to be on your waivers because he's he's not kind of the news went under there, but yeah, especially in deeper leagues. I like some Pollard. Um, do you like any Hopkins or do you like any any Tajay this week on the other side? You no, know, Tajay's dealing with an injury. Even if he's mm-hmm. healthy, I still Pollard has kind of taken control. Guy's got no ACL, field. by the way. Yeah. Guy's got no ACLs. Yeah, I know. No, no MCL. Uh, missing, DeAndre missing, Hopkins missing. is is just like Michael Pittman. The talent's there. I'm waiting to see it. He's been I, injured point, too. Let's let's be honest. He was injured to start the season. I don't know how yeah. much they, they wanted to use him right off the gates when you have a healthy Ridley. Ridley hasn't really been blowing anybody's hair back either. No, I mean he had two touchdowns last week. One was a rushing one, so they're trying to get ways to get him the ball. He's he explosive. The, he's a, he's a younger, more spry of the two guys. He's a great route runner too. I I don't know. I don't dislike DeAndre Hopkins. I didn't get to, get to pick him up in our league, but. I'm if I did, I'd be sitting him unless you're like my team and you're completely injured and you have to start him. I'm sitting him until I see some growth from Will Levis and able to really sp- split the ball around to other people and continue mm-hmm. to stretch these drives out a little bit longer because that's just going to reduce target share um, and target volume because they're doing three and outs left and right. So I think this is going to be one that the Titans can win. I mean, they came close against the Jets. I think they could do it here. Um mm-hmm. So let's move on to Chargers Steelers. This could be an ugly game. It's all dependent upon is Justin Herbert going to play? Uh, how healthy is Justin Herbert? And if he is playing, how mobile is he going to be? Uh, so I, I, I'm sitting Justin Herbert even if he is playing. I'm focusing on what the Chargers are doing best this season, and that's running the ball. So I'm starting J.K. Dobbins here. And on the other end of the ball, I'm actually starting Najee Harris because the Chargers have been good against the pass and, and pass rush. Uh, with the pass rush, but they can give up some on the ground. And I like Najee in a volume play this week against the Chargers to try and take control of the clock and keep the ball kind of out of Justin Fields' hands a little bit here. Hmm. So this one's a 38 and a half total, um, Steelers by two and a half. I think you got to keep smashing Dobbins, right? They've shown a commitment to him. He's leading the league in rushing on yep. like half, half the carries of the next guy next to him. He's shown that he's explosive. Um yeah, I think they announced uh, we've already got news that Fields is confirmed starter. So I have Pickens. I don't know if I'll be starting him in my league. He really hasn't shown us a whole lot yet. That offense hasn't shown us a whole lot, but I think you can you can trust Najee for sure and his volume seems to be very locked in week to week. You know, he's getting his I also have Najee. So um kind of yeah, a I'm sitting sitting the Chargers wide receivers. I expect Quentin Johnston to kind of get the Joey Porter Jr. Uh, treatment here because he did yeah. show up to be the guy last week. Um, kind of a tough this spot. Pass rush, this pass rush is going to be tough with Watt. I mean, it's going to be tough yeah. to get the ball out of his hands. I just don't like it for the passing offense of the Chargers. So maybe more of a McConkey Dobbins, day. Give me some Harris. Give me the Steelers defense. Mm-hmm. So no, no, nothing more to really talk about in this game. Let's be honest. Um, another one too that has a lopsided affair more than this one is going to be the Broncos Bucks. Um, this Broncos offense is struggling big time, but the Bucks have is not. Do we see a tough Bucks defense or a tough Broncos defense slow down the Buccaneers offense this week? Do you think? I don't like anybody on the Broncos to be honest with you. Yeah, but do you um, think this defense on the Broncos will slow down the offense of the Buccaneers, or do you think the Bucks are going to keep rolling? I think they're going to keep rolling. I agree. Is it in Tampa? It's in Tampa. In Tampa. Uh, I mean, Baker's playing some great ball. He's playing some really passionate ball. Um, he's got great wideouts, right? He's got great running backs. And and that offensive coordinator is cooking it up right now. Uh, oh, God yeah. having a resurgence. So I think this is a is a real route here by the Bucks. I've got Godwin and uh, Chris as Evans as a starter. Not surprised he's on his team, but yeah, Chris has I, sit I, Broncos entire team. Yeah, I mean, I have I said Javante is a sit and Broncos receivers is a sit, but it's pretty much everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one thing I will say is I I am I would maybe fade Mike Evans in this game. Um, if you got somebody with a better matchup, 
if you got a stocked wide receiver core. I understand there's people like Debo and others that are out. But like if you have somebody like JSN that's 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 available on your team and you have Evans, Evans is gonna probably get Patrick Sertain here. And I don't love that. I love the Godwin play because I think he's gonna feast again. I like Rashad White, sleeper here, Bucky Irving. Um, and then you got to – I still like Baker Mayfield in this game. Uh, even though the Broncos are pretty good D, I still like Mayfield. And I love to fire up the Buccaneers D. I just picked them up for a, a streamer play here. I think this could be a messy game for the Broncos again. Yeah. I can't ever have anybody fade Mike Evans, but I, I get I what know. you're saying. How do, how do we know Godwin doesn't see top coverage? Because Godwin's going to be moving all around the place. He's going okay. – he, like Sertain's going to be shadowing Evans, who Evans is going to be the most outside guy. Godwin's going to be on the inside on the slot, and they're not going to make the mistake of trying to put Sertain on Godwin on the inside to maybe leave Mc- Mike Evans one on one with somebody on the outside. Maybe McMillan takes another step forward, kind of took a little step yeah, back. Yeah, I'd be interested to see again what he has game. here. I know a lot of people rushed to pick him up. He had, a, yeah. you know, a decent game one. I wasn't yeah. sold on it um, yeah. quite yet after week one but i think he's talented and i like him coming out of college kind so, of a smack kind of a smash spot for rashad white in the running backs you think but his yards per carry think. is still so low which is why i had it's sleeper thick. bucky irving like this could the scales could start evening out and tilting in the favor of bucky irving if he keeps punching the ball in the way he is so yeah let's talk about a team that is in pretty much in need of a quarterback and is going to be leaning heavily on their running back here. And that's the dolphins at Seattle, uh, away game here for them traveling across the country. Uh, you have a hurt Kenneth Walker for Seattle. So Charbonnet is a start here. DK Metcalf and JSN both had hundred yard games last week. It can happen again this week. Uh, Tyreek Hill is a start and Jalen Waddler starts because simple fact is just get the ball in their hands and let them do things. There you go. A little water work. And a Chan is a man possessed with the ball in his hands on both running and receiving. He's a freak. It's going to really come down for Miami. Can Skylar Thompson just get the ball in the playmaker's hands? Period. That's all he needs to do. That's all he's going to be asked to do. Um, I'm sitting Lockett in this game. I just don't think there's – like the Dolphins' defense is not that bad. I don't think there's going to be enough to go around uh, on both sides. And we saw what happened with – the Buffalo game. It was James Cook that took over that game, really. It wasn't a really big uh, showing by Josh Allen and the receivers and the pass catchers. So I expect something bigger from Zach Charbonnet here than he did last week, even though he did have the touchdown, low yards per carry. Um, The Dolphins are more susceptible on the ground. McDaniel's going to have to get creative here, right? Um, Yeah. I wish Malik Washington was healthy. It'd be something fun to watch here. So Mostert practice today, I saw. So they'll, they'll look to have Mostert, it, it, it would appear. Um, do they do they incorporate the rookie, um, either one of them? You know, I think they're going to use it as whatever they can Jaylen running Wright. wise. On the, yeah, yeah, whatever they can do on the ground. Because, But here's the other thing, too, is you're going to have to pass the ball. And I think, I think Skylar Thompson is going to be able to do it. I'm not concerned about that. But these deep plays that Tua would hit on a, on a you know quick read and go, like – that second nature uh, that Tua had with his receivers is not going to be here with Thompson. Thompson's going to hold on the ball a little bit longer there, may not be able to hit it open or may get sacked on that opportunity. I think they're going to try and get the ball out of the hands quickly. I think it's going to really benefit Jalen Waddell on a lot of those slants. He could, you could see him grab one, catch it on a slant, and be gone as well. Like He can do that very well with the best of them. They're one of the biggest dogs on the slate, which is – you don't typically see with the Dolphins. They're uh, six and a half road dogs here. Yeah, especially without the quarterback. So, so I'm interested to see how Mike McDaniel and this offense bounces back. Um, let's talk about the Panthers Raiders and a team that needs to bounce in a right direction is the Panthers. Yep. And they decided to bench their starting quarterback, the number one pick in the NFL draft two years ago, to do so. And they're going to play the Red Rocket Andy Dalton, who Chris here has as a start. Um, I'm a little bit more weary of that as a start because I think the Raiders' D is pretty good. But you're starting Minshew, I think, here against the Panthers. I think you got to. Um, you're starting Bowers and Adams, his two top targets. Uh, and then if you're going to feel good about Andy Dalton, I think you should feel good about Adam Thielen because he's already had a rapport with Dalton in the past. And I think you got to feel good about Deontay Johnson. I think he's going to be able to get open for um, before Andy Dalton. But one thing I don't like in this game, and I don't know how you feel about this, 
I do not like any running backs on either side of here. Both defenses have stopped the run pretty well. Yeah, kind of a shy away spot when you think about the runners from both sides here. Um, Vegas not really loving this game, 38 and a half, and has got Raiders by a touchdown, which makes sense the way that they're playing defensively. Um, but it could be a game where Carolina being pretty bad on defense, they do decide to shove the ball in Zamir's stomach, you know, 20 times, and he rips off some, some I, I mean, I could, see that. I could see You're that happening. Um, love Bowers, a little bias there. I mean, you got the Georgia jersey on, so you understand, right? Um, we're, in, we're in Athens here, baby. Of course, we're a little biased. Got to love Bowers. But you're starting tight end coming out of college. You're starting Adams if you have him. I'm, hey, I'm I'm probably feeling pretty good about starting Minshew too. Carolina just really hasn't shown much at all anywhere. Um, but we'll see. Maybe they rally around Dalton. I know? mean, what's your thoughts on the Dalton? Chris has him as a start along with the his two biggest weapons, Johnson and and Thielen. You think that's that's, that's, a think mistake. that's risky? Look, I think his last game he he threw up points, but you know, would you want to be starting the first game? And I don't know. When was the last time he started? Last year sometime? It's been months. Yeah. Right? Well, uh, the only thing I would say is. You want to be going against Max Crosby? Yeah. A start you for know, Andy Dalton is not a start in, Vegas. in a, a single quarterback league. You're not starting him in a single quarterback league. You're pretty league. desperate to be thrown You're out starting Dalton. him in a yeah. super flex league, exactly. maybe. Or you're yeah. starting him in, you know, in a dynasty super flex. Somewhere where sure. you need a second quarterback and you had love. Or you had one of these other guys that are that are hurt. Tua. You could, and you pick them up. Like it's something that you can do. I don't love it, but it does it enhance. I think Adam Thielen and exactly. DeAndre Johnson a little bit. It wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if he elevated those guys a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, because the the offense is going to look somewhat competent this week. So they're going to have to throw the ball. Chuba Hubbard uh, is a guy I don't see on Chris's list here, but that I would. You know, if I needed a running back, I'm going to start Chuba Hubbard. Yeah, I just don't love the running game here. They've been giving Miles Sanders opportunities. And they haven't. Both guys have not been doing well there. Uh, I think they're just they're counting the days down until Jonathan Brooks really. So um, let's he's, talk he's about the into a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, I know coming right yeah, into a bad one. Tough. We'll see. Be a so game. Ravens, I think everybody's gonna be interested to see what happens there. Yeah, Ray. I mean, once we get close to Brooks coming in, we'll we'll be talking in detail here at the uh, standard. But let's talk about Ravens Cowboys Cowboys. Laid a Cowboys. dud against the the Saints last week. I think this is going to be a bounce back week for uh, for that. And also the Ravens laid a dud against the Raiders. I think it's going to be a bounce back week for both teams. I think this is going to be a higher scoring affair than I. I would take the over in this game. I'm starting. You start your studs. That's pretty much what we're saying here. Start everybody who's the big playmaker for each team. And um, I'm sitting the I'm sitting the running backs more than anything here. Like, I just don't know the yards per carry for Derrick Henry. You're probably starting him because you want him to get in the end zone. But if he doesn't get in the end zone, you're going to be pretty upset with the start play there. And then on the Cowboys side, I think eventually this baton is going to be handed fully to Dowdle. I don't understand why they're, the Zeke experiment is still going on. He's just not getting it done. And so, Deuce Vaughn. Got yeah, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn got opportunities too. last week. It's a real Cook running is out the practice week. squad. Like. A real running back by committee there. Yeah, I, mean, I don't love it. So start your studs through the air here. Start Prescott. Start Lamar. Start is, CD. Start Zay. Start the. I'd even hear start Jalen Tolbert like Chris has here. And if here's the big one, if Fergie comes back, if Jake Ferguson comes back, I have him as a start. Um, is Cooks because, hurt? Brandon Cooks hurt. Uh, Brandon Cooks has been dealing with injuries all, all you know past two weeks. Okay. But I, I, he also ha has such a low snap count uh, <laughs> on this offense. They don't, they put him in when they want him in the game, and he's not always in there. And so it's just lowering opportunity. So it, it should be an interesting one here. I, I'm going to take the over in this game. I think both teams are, are upset about the loss they had, especially the Cowboys, and they're both going to come out firing. Uh, let's talk about 49ers-Rams. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you take the seat here on on, on who do you like in this game uh, between these two teams. And, and if you are if you are advising anybody from the Ram side, from the Ram side, it's very hard to say anyone other than um, your boy Kyron. I mean, and that's it. <laughs> you know, uh, 
Chris has Demarcus well, Robinson and, and we'll see Stafford. what happens. Yeah, Chris has those yeah. guys as starts here. I think those I, are desperation plays. I'm on the fade plays. side of it. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, if you take a look at the sample size of last week in the second half of the game with no Cooper Cup, Kyron actually had five targets out the backfield, caught four of them for 20-something yards. I think we're going to see a little bit more of that action um, mm-hmm. because I think Matt Stafford's going to have to dump down to his running back. The uh, only thing I, I like- would say – the only thing I was I was going to say is in some mop-up garbage time, you know, maybe you yeah. see some, some of the guys on the Rams pop off a little bit. I like Jordan Whittington just because he's got the youth on his side. Um, he's got some yak ability to him, you know, little dump offs that he can he can create opportunities for himself with. But this is a this is a Jordan Mason smash spot here. Again, yeah, I I agree with with Debo Samuel out here. You're going to see Juwan Jennings get a little bit more opportunities here. Um, you like Purdy in a spot where they can get up big. I mean, we saw what Kyler did uh, last week. Now the difference is, is Kyler is so mobile he created those opportunities last week versus Purdy's not going to get that done. So I kind of like Kittle a little bit more with Debo out. We've seen this in the past. When Ayuk or, or Debo's out, Kittle just absolutely outperforms his his uh, his projections. And I think this is going to be another week he outperforms his projections. I will say the rookie cowing is a little bit interesting with Debo out. Um, but I do agree that it's probably just directly onto Juwan Jennings and Kittle and Ayuk. Yeah. So start your studs. Start your studs. That's I mean, it's, that's the name of the game. I, people get upset with yeah. themselves when they don't play their studs. I mean, yeah, like Chris, Chris last week lost uh-huh. because he sat Devontae Adams in week. Which you could it's understand. tough to do that in week two. It's tough to do it. But uh, Lions at Cardinals. Speaking of Kyler, we're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. Welcome to the NFL. Had a fantastic two touchdown performance for you, Nick. I, I you got the victory too as well this past weekend. And the most, um, but you're. Your start. I think this Cardinals offense is just going to continue to grow. Um, the Lions offense, on the other hand, is one that is surprising a lot of people. It doesn't have the firepower in terms of touchdown potential that everybody expected it to be. And I don't know if it's on the shoulders of Jared Goff. Um, I just think this may be a game here where you see them, you know, actually flourish the way you want to see them. So I think you're starting your studs here. You're starting all the pass catchers for the Lions and all the pass catchers for uh, the big pass catchers, I should say, for the Cardinals. Um, and I, I really do like the running backs in this game, too, for the Lions. I know we don't have them on here, but mm-hmm. I, I'm i starting to really lean heavily on this David Montgomery. It's exactly the way it was last year to start the season. Like, this guy's going to get the touchdowns. He's going to get the short yardage opportunities. And he can still have big chunk plays. He's still young. He's not an old guy. So all these people taking Jameer Gibbs in the first round, that was my worry and that was my concern. And my advice was to don't do that. Like there's other people like Taylor and Saquon that should go before him because they have the lion's share of this backfield. Um, But both guys can coexist in this offense and be successful. We've seen it already. So um, I'm not starting any other receivers from the Cardinals. It's kind of going to be a pick and choose who you want this week. Is it going to be Dorch? Is it going to be Wilson? Who's going to get the touchdown? And that's really is going to be is who's going to get the touchdown. Um, so any other thoughts on this game that you like? I was going to say that uh, Chris has Amon here. If he plays, he practiced yeah. in full today. He's playing. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you, you got to nice. lock and load him. If he has any chance of playing, this guy's going to suit up. There's, uh, he's just one of those guys that's going to – I don't like to say play injured – but yeah. he's going to err on the side of playing unless he can't get on the field. Do you think this is the Laporta game? Laporta gets involved this week. He's been really disappointing so far for anybody out there that's drafted him. I don't know. The Cardinals have been pretty good for the <clears throat> for the tight end spot, and mm-hmm. I think it's Laporta is disappointing. Is a little, little, little not good though. Yeah, but that you the one thing I'm going to say though is Arizona. Laporta is is. Uh, a byproduct of Jamison Williams breakout. And I, I, I smelled this happening. Laporta was too rich for my blood. He should not have been the first tight end off the board. And he was in a lot of leagues because Jamison Williams, which both you and I talked about in the off season, I liked them a lot. I didn't get to get them this season, unfortunately. Yep. Um, yeah. But Jamison Williams is getting targeted heavily and chunk plays. And that takes away from what Sam Laporta was doing. Sam Laporta was the number two target last year. He is now yep. the third target. And sometimes in the, in the game, the fourth one, because Jameer Gibbs is there. That's really what the reality of the situation is. It's not him underperforming. 
It's him playing tougher, uh, tougher matchups, not mm-hmm. getting the mismatches all the you time. Just, you just think, though, yeah. in the context of last week to this week, they made it a point to get Amon the ball last week. You know, this this week you would expect the coverage to pull over to Amon. You know, if it if it if it can, <laughs> if it can, if it can exactly. But it's gonna it's gonna leave some opportunities for Laporta. You would think. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think Laporta yeah. should have a better better season moving forward. But you're not getting the season you got out of him last year because Jameson Williams was thinking, is he was just... taking too high in the off season. There yeah, and Jamie and and eight touchdowns, like everything he did last year was unbelievable. But yeah, again, Jamo coming out and playing the way he's playing is he spelling out. opportunities for these other pass catchers. I agree. This this is your highest total game of the week, though, right here, fifty one and a half. Yeah, I, I'm excited to watch this one. Honestly, yep. a lot of fantasy implications. Same. Um, Chiefs Falcons. This is the, last, the Sunday night game here. Uh, okay. We're coming up to the primetime games. Yep. I think. Based on what the Falcons did, you got to start. Uh, you got to start Bijan. You got to start. You got to take a chance to start Drake London again. Um, you mm-hmm. could tell that Kirk was going his way. You got to start mm-hmm. Kyle Pitts, especially because the Chiefs have been thrashed. Like this may be my my slam dunk start of the week is Kyle Pitts. They've like, been if you're a Pitts it up. owner, you, this is the game you want to watch because the Chiefs have been just destroyed by Mike Gesicki for over ninety yards. Isaiah likely for over 100 yards and a touchdown. I think you're going to see Kyle Pitts just run amok here. Um, on the other side of the ball for the Chiefs, because there's like Carson Steele is a start here for uh, Chris, and I agree with him because the Falcons were just absolutely destroyed by Saquon Barkley. Not comparing Carson Steele to Barkley, but there's going to be chances for him to run between the tackles successfully. But they're going to. I think Mahomes has been under throwing because he hasn't had to. And he's going to start throwing the ball a lot more this game until we get Pacheco back. He's been in the low 20s in, in um, pass attempts per game. I expect him to be in the 30s and 40s. What are you doing with P. Ryan here? I don't see him on Chris's start or sleeper list. Yeah, so when when we don't list somebody, and this is for everybody listening too as well, when we don't list somebody on our starter sit list, it's not necessarily that we're advising to sit them, but we also don't want to start them. Yeah. So like... This to me, he's a wait and see. I want to wait and see. I don't agree with the Carson Steele start as much as Chris does, but I see why you would, especially after the game uh, that they just had on Monday night. And who's toting the rock? Was able to do, but yeah, you want to wait and see what this backfield looks like too. But right. it's worth it's worth a, a start because he can get big chunk yardage against this Falcons front. So. I like this Falcons team coming off of uh, that Eagles win, though, for sure. Oh, huge yeah. win. Huge Play your win. Falcons. I love it. I think it's going to be one of those ones where that that was the turning point for their season. And had they not won that one, I think it would have been a little bit even slower to get going, get going, get going. Now, let yeah, me so ask Pat you Mahomes, this. last note on this one, 28 attempts week one, 25 attempts week two, 20 completions week one, 18 completions week two. That is not the Pat Mahomes we know. That is not the best quarterback in the NFL we know. I think that's going to change this game. I think they're going to try and really open up the pass game. Are you starting Cousins confidently here? No, I'm not confidently starting Cousins. I don't like he's – not, he's not as mobile as he was. I think he had a great two-minute drill there, but outside of that two-minute drill, he hit a couple good passes. But yeah. I, he was – he was throwing off his back leg a little bit, fun, you know, not funny, but this like, pass rush scares me actually for the Chiefs a little bit again. Yeah, I just him. think it could be a long day for him too. But mm-hmm. that being said, I I doesn't mean those guys can't be successful. I'm still on the on the uh, off the Drake London bus here. I I would have him as more of a sit or in that limbo. Uh, Chris has him as a start. I think Pitts is the big pass catcher start for me here, and I have Darnell Mooney as a start. I think he was a byproduct uh this past weekend of mm-hmm. the eagles playing a really heavy man coverage on both Pitts and drake london i think this is a so, fun one to watch though too I'm excited yeah it's a sunday one. night game it's going to be another yeah. one too it could come down to the end of the game again because you got yeah. young way as it's in atlanta too so let's talk about the big primetime games you got jaguars bills um this is a James Cook smash spot again. No, I, I think you just can't sit James Cook from here on out. The guy, even though he's only getting about, you look at the stat line, he's like, oh, he only had 47% of the running uh, rushes last week against um, the Dolphins. Well, yeah, they got up big and they started running Ray Davis and some of these other guys in there. And 
The only thing that I don't like about this, the, the Bills do, but I do like, is we know James Cook is a fantastic pass catcher. Ty Johnson is too, and Ty Johnson has been getting, every time it hits third down, Ty Johnson's in the game. So that's something you got to understand as a, as a James Cook owner. Like There's going to be opportunities. But third down in the red zone, James Cook's been in there. Um, and But so has Ty Johnson a couple times. Uh, Chris has Christian Kirk here as a start. Um, and Brian Thomas Jr. I have Christian Kirk as a sit. I have Brian Thomas Jr. as a start. I have limbo for um, the other pass catcher, Gabe Davis. Um, I have ETN here as a start as well. And you're starting Allen and Kincaid. I don't want to start any of the Bills receivers. I think this Jaguars defense is pretty good. Khalil Shakir has struggled against press man, and I think that's what they're going to see here a little bit more. Um and Keon Coleman actually has done a lot better and has had been targeted in press man coverage more, which is good because he's a big body and can try and beat that. So that is an interesting sit that I put there, but I could see him being this actually being a good game for him at the end of the day. It, we have to see if um, Evan Ingram is playing because yeah, I suspect with a hamstring injury for Ingram, soft tissue history with him, he's out. Popped up on him, popped up, up on him pregame last week. So yeah, um, I'm who knows how that's I think they're projecting him out, and I'm suspecting him out. Just knowing him as an ex Giants fan, that pushes me a little bit towards uh, confidence with Kirk, even though he's been atrocious. They've been atrocious at getting him. Yeah, I mean, ball. last week there was no there was no uh, Evan Ingram and. He had three targets. I know there was a big play, you know, he could have had a, a score yeah. on or something, you know, but like at the end of the day, Gabe Davis is out targeting him each game. Yeah, you're a Gabe you know? Davis fanboy. So here. Uh, let's talk about the last game on the slate, and that's Joe Burrow and the Bengals at home versus the Washington Commanders. This is a Joe Burrow smash spot. If it, This may be the best game of Joe Burrow's fantasy season here um, with or without Higgins. So you're starting Chase. I think Chase is going to get back on that first-round receiver board here. Uh, I like Zach Moss here, too, as well. Jaden Daniels is somebody that Chris has a start here. His rushing upside keeps him in a starting spot alone, although I think until he starts getting the passing game going a little bit better, his ceiling is continuing to lower. Um, but I love Brian Robinson. This guy is an animal. And Terry McLaurin's a start for Chris as well. I guess if you like Jaden Daniels, you got to like a receiver here. And I think this could be a bigger game for uh, Terry McLaurin as well. I am not starting the tight ends. Both teams have actually given up pretty much nothing to the tight end positions. So I know Gesicki had a big game this past week. If Higgins doesn't go, I may bump that up a little bit. But I'd rather go Yoshivas, who had a, a touchdown last week, uh, than go with Mike Gesicki. Did you see, uh, I think it was over the weekend, that – uh, Jamar Chase purchased insurance on himself, fifty million dollars. Out of boy, yeah. So maybe that means wheels up for Jamar Chase. Um, yeah, because he flipped out at somebody, almost got ejected for the uh, hip drop tackle that he thought got put on him. I don't think it was called, but guy has shown hesitancy. Um, I don't know how much he wasn't around camp at all over the off season um, and preseason, but. Um, this seems like if it's going to be a week that the Bengals are going to blow up, it's this week. This is like one of those Jamar Chase three touchdown games. You know, it's just like he blows you up. Out of, coming. Now, I mean, Higgins, there's, is, they're projecting Higgins to play. He's been practicing. So this is, is a he? chance he comes back here. And if that's the case, too, fire that up even more. I you mean, like I him coming off the hamstring? Game. They got yeah. Burton involved last week. Yeah, they did. And Yoshivas yeah. has been just fine, too. I think they'll still yeah. get him there right. off the hamstring. So here's the thing is they're not going to – this early in the season, someone like Higgins, they're not going to put out there if he's not 100% good to go. They're not going to put him on a snap count. It's not like it's a playoff game and they need him in there for talent and they'll put him on a pitch count. This is like they'll, they're they going to unleash him and get him going because he is better than Yoshivas and he is better than Burton. There's a, I mean, he is – there's a reason why he's asking for the money he wants to get. Mm. And – somebody's going to pay him. And I think this is like the reason I drafted him. The reason a lot of people other did is like, this is one of those seasons you want a contract you show it. It's a show me season. We've seen it year after year in show me seasons. What happens? People it's blow def up. Definitely a, a good offensive environment for your fantasy players at this one. Um, yeah. 
Again, I, I'm hesitant. You know, we'll see the pass rush here for the Bengals and how how it looks against uh, Daniels. It's just difficult to tackle this guy. So I think he's successful on the scrambling and th- and on the rushes. Terry McLaurin's a scary start for me that Chris put on here, but they're going to have to throw the ball because they could get down early. You are, you firing, are you firing up Chase Brown? I, I have him Pretty in my high limbo. high total on this one. Yeah. I have him in my limbo. I, I, like, I like him, but the Bengals are a pretty good defense. They're not a bad defense. No. So, and I would like to see – they're not. He's not dumping off the running backs like you would like to see because he's a running quarterback. He's running first. I would like to see what happens with uh, Terry McLaurin here this week and some of these other guys. Noah Brown started popping up last week, mm-hmm. and Deami Brown. I, they're going to have to get something going through the air. It can't just be Zach Ertz either. So, mm-hmm. um, well, that's the end of our start and sit for the weekend. Nick, thanks for jumping in and joining me today. Me, um, To close out the episode here, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button. We will get everything over to you. Uh, Hit a comment up with us here. Let us know what your thoughts are on starts and sits. Let us know if you have a start or sit trouble question and we'll help you out. And better yet, if you've got a trade because of all these injuries and you need to get some some more depth on your team or you're going after somebody who's really injury riddled and taking advantage of it, come to us. We'll beef up that trade for you and make sure you're on the winning side of it. So as always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.